Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Uh, today I'm going to do a different side, uh, type of video. We've focused a lot on some very hard Sudokus recently. I'm going to do one that's labelled very hard. You can see it there. It appears in the Times today. That's Sunday. Um, but I'm going to do it um, slowly and attempt to show you how even a puzzle labelled very hard is um, very solvable with good technique. Now, I admittedly I'm uh, hoping that this is the normal standard for a very hard puzzle in the Times, Sunday Times. If it proves to be ultra difficult, we may have to think again, but let's go through. And I'm going to recommend using the pencil marks that um, we always discuss on the channel. So where a number can only go in exactly two positions in a 3 by 3 block, then I'm going to suggest what we should do is make little notation marks like that. So you can see I have a 3 here, a 3 here, so I can place two little threes to indicate that in this three little bot in this three by three block the three is limited to exactly two positions. Um, now as always with a Sudoku the first step is just to go through it's almost like running an algorithm or running a program. Um, we need to just populate the grid as much as we can using pencil marks and big numbers. You can see this seven here means the seven is locked into one of these three positions and therefore the 7 in this 3x3 three three block needs to be in row 9, and this 7 here means I can make my pencil marks. I see a 5 here and a 5 here, so this number, that's a big 5. Let's put that in. Um, let's look over here. You can see we can place pencil mark 8s into these two positions, and 8s into those positions too. Pencil mark 5s up here. 7, 7, 7's here. Fours in these two positions. This is, I think, the, the least valuable. I never really like putting pencil marks on these diagonals like this. It, it very rarely adds up to anything. Occasionally you might get a double coming out of it, but it always seems the least valuable sort of geometry for the pencil marks one might find. This cell here, that has to be a big 8 because of the numbers in this 8 here and this 8 here. So let's, let's place that like that. And there we go. That's our first uh, useful pair that we've discovered. We now have an 8 here and an 8 here. Therefore we know that the 8s in this 3x3 three three block are locked into two cells, these two cells. And we already have a 3 in those two cells as well. So we know that if you like, there's two squares here with two unknowns. Therefore, this is a 3-8 pair, and we can use that to make more pencil marks now, because this 2, this can no longer be in either of these two positions, so it must be in row 3. It must be in either this position or this position. So let's put that in like that. Um, similarly with 5s here. And that allows us to resolve that this cannot be a 5 anymore because we have the 5 pencil marks in these two positions here. So this can't be a 5, this is going to have to be a 5. We can pencil mark 1s um, now. You can see this one and this one. We know that the 1 cannot go in this position because this must be a 3 or an 8, so the 1 has to be in one of those two positions. Now we can use this 9 here to make more pencil marks, this time in this 3x3 three three block. And that means that this square here has to be a 9, because we have a 9 one in this cell and a 9 in one of these two cells. So the 9 in this 3x3 three three block is pushed over into column 6, and we can therefore write it in like that. And that's useful. You can see immediately we should be scanning across. 9 can't go in any of these three positions because of this 9. Can't go in this position because of this 9. So we get to make another two pencil marks there. And same logic, pencil marks in these two cells here because of the 9 up here. Now this 8 here means that the 8 in this 3x3 three three block is locked into one of three positions. Now I can't pencil mark this because my pencil marks need there to only be two positions, but it's very simple to see that 
the 8 being in one of these three positions means that the 8 must be in one of these three positions in this 3x3 three three block and therefore it can't be in this position. So we can remove the 8 here and place it here because of the earlier work that we did. Let's put that in. 3s and 3s here, or in fact even just this 3 on its own, pushes the 3 in column 9 down into the bottom 3x3 three three block. So let's pencil mark that in that. 5-8-1 and then this 6 here interacts with this 6 and forces a 6 into one of these two cells. Just taking a look at the 4s, you can see in this column here we need to place the numbers 2, 5 and 7, well in this 3x3 three three block there's only two places a 7 can go and it must be here now in order to make sure that column 6 contains a 7. So let's put that in, let's remove the pencil mark there just to avoid clutter. This has got to be a 5 now and this has got to be a 2. And we can use this 5 and this 5 to place a pencil mark in one of these two positions but we have a 5 here already in fact so that's a 5. that means that this cell here has to be a 5 because it can't be this one anymore. And the moment I write a 5 in to this cell you can see I can immediately place a 1 as well because the 1 can only go in one of two positions. Once a 5 takes up one of those positions the 1 is forced into the other position. So I'm going to get two more numbers there. A 5 here and a 1, a one here. Place the pencil mark 2s over on this side of the grid there. Let's continue with the pencil marks. This one here means there cannot be a 1 in either of these positions, so we can put 1s into those two positions. Look, and this 8 here means there can't be an 8 in either of these two positions, so we'll do the same thing in this 3x3 three three block. Similarly, here. We're now able to place the pencil marks here because this 9 means there's only two positions now in this 3x3 three three block that the 7 can go. And that there's, we can place 2s. And this, this position now, I think, yields the, the, the nice bit of logic that I think will complete the puzzle. So I do recommend pausing the video now if you, um, if you haven't spotted what the next step would be, but we need to use these two pencil marks here, these two two pencil marks. That means there's a two in one of these two positions. And the advantage, I think, of these pencil marks is that it's very simple now to see that we have pencil mark twos here and pencil mark twos here. What does this mean? Well, it means that if this cell is a two, for example, this one will be a two. And if it's the other way around and this is a 2, this will be a 2. Either way there's no longer possible for there to be any other 2's in columns 7 and 8. So in particular when we come down to this 3x3 three three block we can't have 2's in any of these 5 open positions. The 2's are forced over onto this side and look at that. That gives us a lovely 2-3 pair there. Uh, and the 2-3 pair has two consequences. Firstly, these two squares now must be 1 and 4. And you can see we have a 1 here, so we can place a 1 here. Place a 4 here. That's going to give us this 4. Let's remove this 4 and allow us to pencil mark 1s into those two positions. So that's one of the things it does. The other thing it does is it allows us to use exactly the same logic with the 2s and this 3x3 three three block. Now, we don't know where the 2 goes in this 3x3 three three block, other than we know it's not in one of these three positions. It cannot appear in row 7. It's definitely in row 8 or row 9, just as the 2s are here. So wherever the 2s end up being situated in this 3x3 three three block, we're going to have the same pattern that we have here, i.e., let's imagine this is a 2. If this is a 2, this will be a 2. And if the 2 was, say, here instead, this will be a 2. So either way around, there cannot be any 2s in these 
positions here. And look, that means that can't be a 2 anymore, and actually we get to write in a big number 2 up there at the top. But now we can go further than that. We can use exactly the same trick we just did on the 2s with the 3s as well. Look, we've got 3s locked into one of these two positions, and the 3s cannot appear in these three cells. So the 3s are going to appear in row 8 and row 9 in this 3x3 three three block, just as they do here. So the 3 in this 3x3 three three block is forced upwards into row 7. There's only one open position in row 7 now that can, can take a 3, and that, that's that one. We actually get to write that in too. Um, that means we can complete the pencil marks in this cage like that. Now, sixes over here in one of those two positions. We scan upwards. We can see we managed to lock sixes into those two cells. So, in fact, this one will have to be the six. And this is a nine. That means this cell, we use this nine and this nine. This is the only cell that can, can take a 9 now, so 9, use the pencil mark to give us a 2, use the pencil mark to give us a 2, fill in the missing pencil marks from this 3x3 three three block, you can see the 7, the 7, that means this can't be a 7 anymore, the 7 must be over here, let's write that in. The open cells here now must be 1 and 6, and you can see we have a 1 here, so 1 and 6. Um, now this cell here has to be a 4, because it's the... Um, ah, in fact I've made an error there, that's not a 6, is it? That's, what was that going to be? That must be a 4, I think. And that's a 4, there we go. Six, 6, yeah, that looks right. Um, six, six, three, eight. So these two numbers here have got to be one and seven. You can see the nine allows us to place the nine here. Move the nine there. Put the sevens in. And the puzzle is solved now. All, all that's left to be done is really just to tidy up. Uh, you see 1, 3, and 8 down here. 1, we just remember there's a 3. If we look along row 8 now, you can see we need to place the numbers 2, 3, 4, and 8. Ah, yes, but look, we have a 4 here and a 4 here. So we can write pencil mark fours into those two positions. That means this cell here can't be 3, 4, and 8 now. It's only 3 and 8. Now, if it's only 3 and 8, I'll write it in just to show you this isn't strictly in accordance with the pencil marks. This is a 3, 8 square. And look, it matches with this 3, 8 here. Look, So there's a 3, 8 pair in column 2. So that means this cannot be an 8. This must be an 8. Let's quickly fill that in like that. That means this is an 8 over here. This can't be an 8 anymore. Let's mark the 3's in. This 9 here means there can't be a 9 in any of these three positions. In fact, there's only one place a 9 can go now, and that's here in this top 3x3 three three block. Uh, so let's write that in. You unwind the pencil marks, we get all of the remaining numbers there. Um, because we can also fill in that one. That's going to be a 6, that must be a 7. Um, 9, 9, this must be a 9, look. Must be a 6 in one of these two positions. So we still need a 6 in column 2. That means this number here has got to be a 3. Rid of the nine. You can see we need the numbers two and six to finish off column one now. Four can only go in this position. The 
because this has to be a three. And there we go, that's finished the puzzle. Eight, eight, three. Three, so it's got to be a four or a six. That means I think this cell here can only be a one. Seven, one, oops, two, and six. And there we go. Um, so, thanks for watching. I hope this was a useful run through. Did it very slowly today just to show you that even this is the hardest Sudoku that the Sunday Times publishes each week. And just with a logical technique, no problem at all. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy the content, please subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate it. We'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.